the ear is divided into the external ear, which extends to the eardrum and includes the eardrum, the middle ear, which is a air-filled space that contains three little bones called the ossicles of the ear, and the inner ear, in which we're going to find the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus. The cochlea is an organ of hearing. The vestibular apparatus is balance. The outer ear includes the pinna, which collects sound waves and directs them through the external auditory meatus. The sound waves travel through the canal and when they hit the tympanic membrane or the eardrum, the tympanic membrane vibrates. <clears throat> the middle ear begins on the other side of the tympanic membrane and contains three small bones known together as the ossicles of the ear. The bone that is adjacent to the eardrum is called the malleus. It in turn is attached to another little bone called the incus and that bone is attached to the third one which is called the stapes. So the stapes is right at the end of my finger. The eardrum vibrates <clears throat> and transmits its energy into the malleus which begins to vibrate. It in turn causes the incus to vibrate and the incus then causes the stapes to vibrate. In the middle ear is located the auditory tube which is an air-filled passageway that leads to the throat. This allows for equal air pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane. If the tympanic membrane has more pressure on one side than the other, then it will not vibrate properly. I'm going to remove the vestibular cochlear apparatus with the stapes attached. Notice that the cochlea has been cut open so we can see the chambers inside. The stapes fits in the oval window. Just beyond the oval window is the fluid filled vestibular duct or the scala vestibuli. On this model, it's the orange-colored chamber, and if you can imagine that leading forward, see, it would begin right here. The stapes presses against the fluid, causing it to flow. The fluid spirals at the top of the cochlea. The fluid makes a U-turn and begins to descend through the tympanic duct, which is blue on this model. So the blue is indicating fluid swirling down, down, down. When we pick it up at the bottom of the model, here it is, so the fluid now is flowing this way. The tympanic duct ends in the round window. The round window is covered by a flexible membrane then that extends out. So as the stapes pushes in, fluid swirls up, makes a U-turn, comes down, and flows to the round window, and the round window then extends to accommodate the incoming fluid. It then snaps back into place, and fluid then comes back to its resting position and we're ready to do it again. 
in between the scala vestibuli or the vestibular duct and the tympanic duct is the cochlear duct. The cochlear duct is bounded by the basilar membrane which is adjacent to the tympanic duct and by the vestibular membrane which is adjacent to the vestibular duct. Sitting on the basilar membrane is the spiral organ or the organ of corti. As fluid swirls around it causes vibration of the organ of corti. The hair cells that make it up catch on a thin membrane called the tectoral membrane that lays just above the cells within the duct. The hair cells bend and potassium ion enters. That's the transduction of sound 